Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. Today we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. This is completely spoiler filled, so don't watch this unless you've seen the movie. All right, let's get into it. I loved it. Um, I thought this is on par with the Avengers, if not better. Uh, we'll see uh, how time treats it. Uh, it had the perfect balance of action, humor, and great characters that I was emotionally connected to. People always ask, what's your favorite character? Um, that's a hard question to answer, because everyone had their moments to shine. Chris Pratt was spectacular as Star-Lord. Uh, he had that little bit of Andy Dwyer, he had that little bit of action Indiana Jones kind of thing going on. Uh, he was perfect. But my favorite was probably Groot. Groot really stole the show in a couple key moments. The biggest moment was when Groot kind of bind a bunch of guys and then like swung them around. It was a huge, huge applause from the audience. Similar to how in Avengers, when Hulk grabbed Loki and threw him around, it was a huge applause. It was just like that. And the little baby dancing Groot at the very end. If Disney isn't making little robotic Groots and little planters that you push a button and it dances to Jackson 5, if they're not doing that, they are out of their minds. The funniest character of the movie for me was probably Drax, uh, played by Dave Bautista, which is really surprising because he's the most serious. But it was because he was so serious and the situations were so hilarious and Quill would use phrases that Drax didn't understand and... Uh, always got a huge reaction from the crowd. And I, second time, I still was laughing just as hard as I was the first. God, and then Rocket Raccoon was really cool too. Um, if Rocket failed, this movie would have flopped. But luckily, it looked incredible. Bradley Cooper's voice, you couldn't even tell it was him. It was perfect. Uh, the character of Rocket, it was emotional. The scene when he was drinking and he's talking about like being a vermin and like no one treats him with any respect. And like, like it was like, emotional, like almost a tearjerker moment. So incredible work on Rocket. If anyone was the weak link, it was probably Gamora. She was cool, but didn't have as many moments as the other characters to really shine. But overall, I was just really connected to the heroes. Um, from the very first scene with Quill and his mom, I was starting to tear up until all the way through the very end, the We Are Groot line, oh my God just couldn't and then Rocket with the little planter and he was crying and Drax like puts his hand on his head and like pets him. Oh, so good. I mentioned this in my written review, but the villains were not great. They all looked cool, especially Nebula looked awesome, but Ronan, I didn't really understand what he was doing. Uh, the whole political storyline of the Kree and the peace treaty I didn't understand why he was upset. I didn't understand why he wanted to destroy this planet. Uh, so without understanding that, it kind of lost interest to me. I didn't, I didn't know what he was doing. But luckily, the heroes were so compelling that I cared about them, and that kept the story going. Now, visually, the movie was stunning. There were so many bright colors, but it still managed to look dark and gritty and real. Like, my favorite shot of the movie is when Ronan takes Drax and throws him into this vat of yellow spinal fluid that comes from the floating head nowhere. When he throws him into that yellow goo and you see Drax kind of falling through it, it's a very quick shot, but it's just so interesting looking. And there's moments like that throughout the entire movie, just flashes of color. Um, and it's very cool and very well done. Now the biggest moment of this movie, for most fans, for most diehard fans, comes pretty early on. And that's when we get the big reveal for the villain Thanos. Now we saw Thanos in Avengers in the post credit scene as he just kind of does a kind of turn and smirk. But here he has real dialogue voiced by Josh Brolin uh, and he has stuff to do. He's talking about things, he's kind of, he has an agenda. Um, he sounded incredible, didn't look as incredible as I wanted. He looked pretty computer generated. I wanted him to look a little more real. But I'm sure when he's the center of a movie, they'll put more time and effort into that CGI. Um, it just looked a little fake to me, like a cut scene from a video game or something. Um, but that scene is incredible. Because if you're a fan of the comic books, you know that Thanos is going to be the big bad eventually. He's going to be the villain that the Avengers, the Guardians, everyone is going to have to take down. So this is setting up kind of this huge story. It's assumed that Thanos is going to be the villain in Avengers 3. 
and Avengers 2 is coming out next summer, so there's still a long ways to go. But if you understand Thanos, you know why this is going to take a long time. Because Thanos is obsessed with the Infinity Stones, which we've seen a few of now. So we've seen the Tesseract in the Avengers, the blue cube. We've seen the Aether in the Dark World, kind of that red swirling stuff. It's believed that Loki's scepter in the Avengers, that he can change minds, kind of mind control people, uh, that that is an Infinity Stone. And now we've seen this purple stone, which uh, doesn't really have a cool name. Um, so we've seen four, and there's six totals. So there's two more that we're going to discover. Um, and Thanos, it's his mission to get all of them um, and essentially become God, which makes him nearly unstoppable. I mean, imagine how powerful Ronin was with one Infinity Stone. Imagine having all six. So in Avengers 3, it's likely that Thanos is going to get all of these Infinity Stones. He's going to go to Nova Corps, get that one. He's going to go to the Collector, get that one. Uh, go to Asgard, get that one. Uh, the Scepter is being experimented on by Hydra, as we saw in the post credit scenes for Winter Soldier. So he'll go get that stone, uh, and then probably build up to a big climax where he uh, gets the last two. Um, this does tie in a little bit with what we might want to see in a sequel for Guardians. Because there's one character that we didn't see that is very closely tied to both the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers and Thanos. And his name is Adam Warlock. And why he's tied to these characters is because he has an Infinity Stone embedded right in his head. I believe it's usually the Soul Gem, I think, that he usually has. But it'd be a cool twist, um, since they're each kind of themed a little differently. If that was the Time Stone, and the sequel to Guardians allowed him to see events that have happened in the past, and it would give us insight as an audience into um, what happened to Quill's father, what happened to Drax's family, what happened to Gamora, she was being raised by Thanos, why was Groot exiled from his species, essentially, uh, who experimented on Rocket. It would let us see these cool moments in their history, but not in a heavy-handed exposition way, but in a way that made sense in the story, if he could see them and flash upon what their past was like. Um, and then unfortunately it would probably end badly for Adam Warlock as Thanos rips that gem out of his head. But it'd be an epic moment on the big screen. So, I loved Guardians. I loved everything about it. I thought the characters were great. Um, I'm definitely going to see it a couple more times in theaters. It's definitely a big screen experience. And if you haven't seen it, hopefully you're not watching this video. But if you have seen it, tell your friends. We want this movie to make decent money so that Marvel is reaffirmed that they can take risks like this. That there's other intergalactic cosmic stories, there's other lesser known heroes that we will go see those movies, Marvel, we promise. So go see Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, tell your friends to see it multiple, multiple times. Um, so that's basically it, my thoughts with some spoilers. Uh, if you wanna read other articles, weekly movie reviews, uh, things like that, head over to IamYourTargetDemographic.com and comment, subscribe, like, whatever below. And thanks for watching.